Okay, now we want to get back to our velocity potential der the derivation that we actually have now that we have a convenient expression for the speed of sound. So what we had was dp is negative rho over 2 times the derivative, uh, the differential, sorry, of d p dx squared plus d d dy squared. And also that dp d rho was the speed of sound squared, so that we can write that dp is the speed of sound squared times d rho. So then, putting this together, we can get that d rho is negative rho over 2a squared times the differential of our same term inside this bracket. So now, remember, this is, we started dealing with momentum, so let's now look at the individual directions. Um, so in x, we get d rho dx is going to be negative rho over 2a squared times dx derivative. of the above expression. Which says that d rho dx is negative rho over a squared times we put the two in and work out this differential or this derivative, we get d d dx d squared d dx squared plus d d dy d squared d d y um, d x d y and then similarly we can get uh, equivalent expression in the y direction which is d y d y negative rho over a squared the same sort of derivative but now with the second derivative on the y uh, being up here rather than mixed derivative on the y term. Now if we take these two results for the x and y uh, partial derivatives of density and put them into the mass conservation equation we can get something that looks like this. Minus 2 over a squared dp dx dp dy d squared d dx dy equals 0. So here's an equation for our velocity potential that now has a single parameter in it, which is just the speed of sound a. Now, we can still do a little bit better than this to make this more tractable to deal with in that we can write the speed of sound squared in terms of the stagnation speed of sound minus the over 1 over 2 d squared and this essentially comes from the definition of stagnation temperature so then we get this as n squared minus the L minus 1 over 2 u squared plus v squared, and we can write this in terms of the potential as well.
Now, A0, the stagnation speed of sound, and gamma are known constants of the flow. So putting this into the velocity potential gives a single partial differential equation where the only unknown is the potential itself, V. So in principle, putting this into this equation can be, is an equation that can then be solved subject to some boundary conditions. Um, typically this would be the same as in incompressible flow where we have an infinity boundary and also a uh, no-slip condition, or sorry, a uh, ten, uh, tangent velocity condition on the body of interest. Once phi is known, then u is just e to the x, v is just e to the y. We can use this expression to get the speed of sound, a. We can write the Mach number as just the square root of u squared plus v squared over a. And we can use the isentropic relations to get the pressure, temperature, and density at any point in the flow once we know the Mach number. So all we need is to, to determine this potential, know the stagnation speed of sound, and the ratio of specific heats for our gas, and we can essentially find everything that we need to know about the flow given the boundary conditions. Now the big disadvantage of this equation is that it's nonlinear, which is a fundamental difference from the incompressible flow case, where we ended up with Laplace's equation, which was a linear differential equation. So the fact that this is nonlinear means that there's no straightforward analytical solution. Instead, it needs to be solved numerically. But in practice, to develop some kind of useful theory, this isn't very useful. So instead, we want to simplify by making assumptions. The two key assumptions we're going to make are that our bodies are slender. That is, they're much longer than they are tall. And that we're only interested in small angles of attack. You can see that in a sense, these are both the same assumption. Because even a slender body at large angle of attack still has essentially a large frontal area facing the flow. And the real goal of these two assumptions is to have a small frontal area um, of our object that's facing the flow. So, like this. Now, making these two assumptions leads us to be able to develop an approximate linear form of the velocity potential equation for subsonic and supersonic flow, but not for sonic flow, as we'll see. So we get a linear approximate equation for the potential with an analytical solution. And we'll develop that equation now.